so as i was saying i'm sharing another book another story with you this is really it's a short story it's not a book um i think it's only about seven thousand words or so i've read it a few weeks ago before i've read these two books and it's by uh, craig atkinson and as i always as i mentioned i helped him with the cover design um and the, I'll, I'll show you the the cover it's called the longest weekend um, and it's uh, basically a story about love taking chances and missed opportunities and although it is a brief story um i don't know i really liked craig's um style he's a writer i would write i would read again how how to share about this story without spoiling it away because again you should just some stories are better if you just read them for yourself and not know anything about it that's the best way to experience a book for me anyway um i feel the second i give you something about the book the story i'm like spoiling the discovery of a story which is part of the pleasure of a story um, but this book is about a gentleman uh, a chef um, and he kind of has feeling for feelings for this girl who works with him and um, yeah <laughs> I don't want to like tell you the plot because then what's the point on reading the whole story because it's, it's short um, but what I wanted to, I want to mention about it is that I liked there's The way he uses the words to convey certain situations, like I, I still remember, though I've read it a few weeks ago, I remember there was a scene, that's how I call those moments, a scene by the kitchen where the light is falling on the back of a character and there were other things about the weather in uh, Japan and in, in Tokyo where the action takes place. Um, and yeah it just makes you feel like you're really there with the character so that's why i'm really curious to read uh whatever else mr uh, mr craig atkinson will have to share with us um so yeah it's something I, i'm urging you to read it's only brief so we won't take you too long i think i've read it in a couple of hours <laughs> um i'll show you the cover design again it's fully black but it's just the way it shows on my on my phone and I think it's gonna have the print version available in the future and so yeah these are the stories I've read <laughs> in the last few weeks I know it's not much uh, people have there's booktubers and have people in general who read so much more than I do um, but I'm a slow reader as mentioned before i can read lots of books in a brief time but sometimes i'm slower but i really enjoy these books and sometimes you can read five books but they don't have the, the impact a book like this has so if you read one book this year make it one of these um either this or that um yeah i mean um there's other things I would like to share with you. I am happy to share that uh, my book Whispers and Other Strange Stories, this one over here, uh, my collection of short stories. You've seen it before on, if you're following this channel. Um, this book is currently in pro full production to become an audiobook. And all I can reveal about my narrator at the moment is that he's a professor and he's been a professor for over 20 years and he's across the ocean so we're working there's like eight hours time difference between us um, I've listened to the first story fully narrated full uh, first story um, like two days ago Saturday, Saturday and Today he said he'll be starting narrating the rest of the books and if all goes well 
you should have most of them narrated by the end of the week and if all goes well <laughs> um, the book should be ready by middle of September if not earlier hopefully earlier but middle of September hopefully because it needs to be approved by ACX the website we're publishing with and yeah I'm really excited about this uh, project because it, this this book is uh, very dear to my heart although it's, it's short there's like 12 short stories in here it's a lot of variety for people although they're like horror stories they're not gory and the print edition contains like uh, drawings done by my father but uh, obviously the audio <laughs> edition won't have that but it's really strange to hear your own stories being narrated and being narrated well it's a really amazing experience i completely advise you and urge you to to do at least one audiobook if you're a writer and have published books um, it, it helps with writing as well for me i find it uh, as i'm working on another project it helps me think even more about the characters because once you, th you think oh how is the narrator going to perform that uh, it makes you pay more attention to the characters you're building and to the writing in general because sometimes if you're saying out loud certain things like if you write them on the page it's okay like he sh said he, sh he said she said or all sorts of little things they might seem on the page but you have to consider if the, the, that story is going to be available in audio form how it sounds it's yeah it's just uh, it's a peculiarity but it's uh, it's something to be aware of when you're writing it, it, I, I really feel it enriches one's uh, writing style um, if you have experience doing this so I'm, I'm really happy about doing this project I think it's a big step in my career as a writer so there's another thing I would like to sh um, talk to you about and I've been interested in doing something like this for years now since I first saw those posts and I'll, I'll put some pictures on the screen um, it's called this this thing is called little free library and it's basically the idea of living live a book uh, share a, um, live a book take a book live a book so it's basically these little houses or built, built up structures where people can leave a book and take a book in exchange and I would love to do that in my village where I come from uh, in Romania and the area of Rancha I think I think it's a great idea to promote reading and I know many people have been turned off reading because they were forced to school to read certain books um, and they felt like they had to ana analyze those stories or they had to um, they, they were maybe scared that the teachers were expecting them to do the assignment and they, they caused them stressed or whatever so I think that's maybe some people don't enjoy reading the reason with these things with the little free, free libraries I think it will really encourage people to read more because they would just basically have access to free books obviously it's just a small structure so it's not a whole library but I think it would really encourage people they wouldn't have to be oh I'm going to the library I'm doing something like purposefully but if it's this and they're walking on a road and they find this they encounter this structure uh, open it uh, open the window and just look at the book see if there's something that strikes their fancy uh, they can read it and, and or take if it's a short book maybe a kid's book they can even read it on the spot it takes like five minutes sometimes with kids books and if they don't have a book to live in place but if they have one with them they can leave one behind and take one in exchange and I think we really help the community um, I think having more of these in a village for example um, maybe like 10 of them for example at various um, 
points in the village would really improve the tourism because um, and also if there's like structures with a little bit of space for sitting and reading um, would be like a rest think time a resting place for people to just catch their breath if they've been walking for a long time uh, which I know I used to do when I was uh, back home in my village and I was little I was going to like those various works on the land and you would have to walk long distances um, sometimes between the different properties and I think it would be nice to have something like this like have a structure um, every couple of minutes not minutes not like five minutes every five minutes but like half an hour distance and have them positioned at um, important uh, places in uh, in the area. For example, it could point you to a certain monument or to a certain uh, beautiful landscape or something like that in the area. Um, I would I think it would help tourists as well. Uh, I think it would be a great attraction <laughs> for the for the for the area. Uh, I'm very much aware that the things much more necessary maybe for a village to have, for the people in a village to have. But I do think uh, there could be found money to support something like this, to have them built, because they're only small structures and sometimes like, you, you can find, you don't necessarily have to have new books, you can find them in second hand shop books. Um, um, so get them very cheaply but still be in very good condition like for example this is a second hand book I pay like three pounds on it um, something like that and it's in very good condition so you know um, so yeah the idea with this <laughs> what I would really like to do I realize this is you know might not happen overnight but I would like to start something like this and I would like to I said with money from sales of my Whispers book or like any book I have really, I've got, I've got three books, one about my dad's wood carving, uh, the one with the short stories and uh, my debut novel which I've recently by the way I've updated the cover. Um, so yeah this is the new cover I feel it's much more suitable <laughs> it's not like shy at all it tells people certain things about the story and I think it's a beautiful painting done by Vanessa from Portugal um, you can check her out on Instagram if you go to my profile and there will be details in the description below so yeah I said with money saved from sales of my books, I will try to put money together and commission having a thing like this built. My father is a wood carver, as you know, he's a sculptor, as you can see, he's, he does like wood carvings and All of this. I had this sculpture since I came in the UK. I took it with me when I left in 2009. Um, so I'm planning maybe to help my dad do something. Um, I don't know, either that, but my, yeah, he's more like a sculpture, it's not like, um, he doesn't build furniture, but I'm sure he can do something like that because it's only a simple design. And I, I have a, an idea of having like a mushroom <laughs> cover or something like that. Like I have a, the books in the middle and have like a cover so the shape of the belt looks like a mushroom or something like that. Because the, the area in my village is like forest and you can go mushroom picking and it's quite nice. So, but anyway, most designs that I've seen are like little houses and little colorful houses and obviously they're enclosed with a glass window um, locked so you know it's protected from uh, snow or rain you know stuff like that so yeah I'm really excited I would love to do something like that and I am going to do it no matter how long it's going to take me obviously like my books are not selling like crazy at the moment but 
hopefully with the, the audio book um, as the audio book will be ready the sales will pick up a bit more and I'm sure it doesn't cost too much to buy some locks to build that and some paint um, shouldn't be too hard hopefully but it would be really wouldn't it be awesome to have like 10 of these in villages across the country you know in each village and as you're walking or maybe you're on a bike and you stop drink some water maybe read a little bit especially as i said if they're like kids books <laughs> you, you can read them really quickly and most will enjoy a, a story from a kids books because uh, because it's it's short and it's it's it doesn't take you long to read and you can put a smile on your face and i don't know i just find it I, as i said it before for me reading like stories are food for the mind as the body needs like food physical food to take care of itself and maintain itself in good condition be healthy we need food for the mind so if you wish to support me to build something like this or have have ideas i know a lady contacted me on twitter and she said that there are in her country i think she was in america i'm not sure um, or no actually she's from germany i think or sweden somewhere around that part i think um she has a bookstagram account i forgot something with the bunny <laughs> love her bunny it's so cute um she said um there are like funding for this sort of things but i don't really want to do that um, i'm not aware of any in my country although i'm sure there could be some sort of funds that can be obtained for something like this but i have tried to do something before for my father who as i mentioned he's a sculptor and i um tried to get funding to build him a proper art studio because the one he has at the moment is not very i mean it's safe it's not like falling apart but for the kind of art he does and the way people appreciate it and they say he's so talented uh, he deserves much more but obviously a structure like that can cost a lot of money because he builds like these are the small wood carvings i showed you he builds massive ones um and you can check his facebook page sculptures krista florin you can see more examples there um so yeah i tried to do that and it, I, I don't know i don't like asking for money um if i am doing something like this and you find like i'm asking for money um it's your issue but the money i'm using is from selling my own books so if you want to buy a book from the ones i have available um that's the kind of donation i accept it's not really a donation but i do see it as a donation because you support this project and you support my writing in a way so that's what i'm thinking to do because every time you ask, you ask for money people see it badly and not everyone has money to give so if i have something to give in exchange maybe you can find some benefits in that and are willing to support it because you're getting something in exchange um, but yeah as i mentioned if you have any suggestions for a project like this how i could get around to do it um that would be amazing but yeah i mentioned before in my previous videos that i would like to do um, a creative retreat once i save enough money don't know when that's gonna happen but hopefully it will happen in the next 10 years <laughs> um, five years will be better but mm, we'll see um, so yeah i would love to do something like this to have like free libraries um, I don't know i just find it like it's a, something romantic I'm, I'm sure people will be like oh i'm taking a selfie next to this uh, i saw a really cool design there was um the trunk of a tree and there was like a glass um door i guess you'd say and you'd basically go in there and there were books 
I mean, it was only a picture, so I couldn't see too much. But yeah, it was basically just the trunk of a tree, so it's quite natural. It was, uh, it wasn't painted just to do it. It was like white, I think, painted, um, and there were like a little um, stones set as steps as you go up, and it was really cool. But that's you know, you need an actual tree, and I wouldn't really want to cut trees unless they're like dying, so you could salvage them in this way, making a beautiful design from them. But with what I really want to do is just build this little cute free libraries <laughs> for people. Um, yeah, I've been talking for the, uh, about this for minutes now, so I'm sure people will complain that it's a long video, but it is what it is. Um, so yeah, if you want to support that, please do. <laughs> please share my video if you can't afford to buy a book maybe. Um, just share the video maybe other people will see it and give me more ideas or help me support this project um, and there's one last thing i want to mention because of, i was working on a book non-fiction book last summer i started it at the end of july the 24th of july i started it last summer and it was a book for uh, writers and because of various things, uh, because I'm doing the audiobook and because I've had some health issues and other things, um, this book is particular book is taking me longer to finish. And I'm not sure when it will be published, but for it, I've gathered several letters from published authors. Some of them are self published, like in the authors, some of them are um, traditionally published. So I've got a couple of them and I've started sharing them on my blog. I think I've published four of them so far. Tomorrow probably I'll uh, publish the fifth and I will continue to do so every week. So if you want to learn from established writers or like writers who have published books, um, some of them, of them have been on my channel. Uh, I've interviewed them like Felix Blackwell and J.D. Estrada. You can check those letters. I found them really insightful. You'd be surprised by the experiences of these authors. I certainly did when I was gathering them because I've sent them some questions. I think it's about 10 questions, 9 or 10 questions. And they, I asked them to answer them in the style of a letter. So they kind of wrote me, you a letter. So please check those uh, this, uh, there will be a link to my website in the description below so you can check those letters um, their title the blog posts are titled simple ways to write publish uh, write edit publish uh, a debut novel book extract number one two three for each letter and yeah i'm sharing these as I said, because I'm not sure when the book will be available. And I know these authors have been publishing more and more as the time passes. So I want to have these at least on the website in case something happens to me. Um, I want to share their experience with you. So, but yeah. And I think it would be quite nice to look back on them, even if they had published two more books <laughs> by the time I'll publish my nonfiction book with their letters in. It'd be nice to, because all the letters I've read so far and that I've gathered, they have, they don't feel outdated. Even if you were to read them five years time, they would be, it would still be relevant. And there were many massive mentions of technology or anything like that, which is basic advice about how to write, how to act once you've published a book and how you should deal with marketing sometimes, what books they recommend reading, their favorite books and stuff like that, you know, what inspires them to write. So it's really, really good, cool stuff in, in those letters. Um, so yeah, I think that's what I wanted to share with you. I was planning to do a 10 minute video, but it's already an hour, so <laughs> um, yeah. Um, anyway. These are the things I wanted to share with you and I was planning, one more thing, I was planning to film during the whole audiobook production 
but because I had various things, I was ill, I went traveling slash for business for a couple of days, went back to Canterbury, came back, um, had some visitors because my partner's uh, sister, she's pregnant. Um, so we took them around Manchester, visited uh, the John Rylands library, library and the Science Museum. Um, so uh, yeah, I don't think I'm gonna like be constantly filming about the process. I'll definitely do a video interview with the narrator once the book is published. And yeah, he said he'll be taking short clips and photos during the production <laughs> to share with you. So, yeah, this, this still should be quite interesting because I haven't found many online. So, we'll see what comes of it, but I am really excited about this book project, uh, audiobook project. I think lots of people are going to enjoy it. And, um, yeah, I'm really excited because it will open my stories to a new segment of readers, of people, you know, who I'm sure will enjoy them. To hear them uh, it's a really interesting experience to actually hear the stories performed not just read read them on a piece of paper um, yeah it's <laughs> it's a wonderful experience <laughs> i was really amazed listening to the samples of uh, in the auditions and yeah really happy with the narrator i think he's great performer, he understands the text and conveying the emotions written down. So I'm really, really excited to have this done and share, to share it with you. So this is really what I wanted to share with you. And if you have any recommendation, accordingly to the books I've shared with you, if you think, if you've liked these books, um, please feel free to share with me what books you'd recommend me. My Goodreads to read uh, uh, shelf is growing. <laughs> so, uh, oh yeah, the next book I'm planning to read is this one because I, I bought it from Mr. David Nichols at the signing. He signed this one as well, of course, he was so kind. Signed it to Krina. So, yeah, I'm planning to read this. I've read like the first few paragraphs from it, or, or first few chapters. And this is in production to be a TV series, I think. So it's, a, yeah, I'm really excited about it. Uh, Mr. David Nichols was talking about doing rewrites after he goes, <laughs> after he finishes the event he was at. He said, oh, I'm going back in the car on the road and I'll be doing rewrites. So, you know, famous writer, he's doing rewrites. Um, in every scrap of time he can find so it's really something to learn from um, yeah if you haven't chance to meet him please do because I guarantee you'll be a wonderful experience um, yeah I said I'll give him a hug when I see him because he made me cry while I was reading these books and uh, really but like cry in a good way so um, I'm just mm, makes me tearful just by thinking about it. Um, so yeah, hopefully you didn't find that strange because um, I tweeted him. He's very responsive. So yeah, um, yeah, it's been a bit of all over the place this video, but it's just because I don't know when I'll be posting another video soon. So I wanted to share with you lots of things. Um, that are going on and yeah this is it <laughs> um, now I'll, I'll finish the video and yeah I think that's all I wanted to say I'll check one more time um, yeah I've mentioned about changing recently changing the cover for my uh, old novel my first novel you were able to see it here and this is the, the new edition, it's basically like the second edition, this is published under my name, my actual name, Krina Ludmila Christian, not under my pen name, which I have it here, the old edition, um, so yeah. Anyway, thank you so much for listening to this long video, I'll probably leave, leave it in two parts, um, so... 
this is it thank you for listening and take care of yourselves and have a lovely afternoon